Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to pick on Gen X Pasture. Um, uh, Pastor Aaron from the Grace and Truth Church. And uh, the, the very first thing I noticed here is he says, Thousand Year Reign of Christ. And of course, that's not found in the Bible at all. Uh, it's. I can't show you because I, it's not there. <laughs> All right, but let's listen to what he has to say. Hey, man. Hey, man. Pastor Aaron of Grace and Truth Church in Dunbar. The thousand-year millennial reign of Christ, which is yet to happen. Well, yeah, sure. It's not even going to happen. Is Jesus fulfilling the Davidic covenant or the Davidic promise so Jesus has not fulfilled that Davidic oh well you know uh, Aaron you make the claim and you've made what three claims here in I would recommend uh, first of all for example go into Revelation 20 and saying see Millennial reign of Christ. But you can't do that because it's not there. All right. And then fulfilling the Davidic law, which I would recommend showing that as well. Davidic covenant. Now, if you spiritualize everything, you can take everything into an allegorical sense but see I think we're living in a tangible world and God gives us tangible I, living in a tangible world what the hell does that mean tangible perceptible by touch thing that is perceptible by touch we're living in a a what kind of world tangible world and what in the world does that mean sense but, see, I think we're living in a tangible world, and God gives us tangible, literal things in the world. I, I don't know what that means. Ah, uh, let's go. Gee whiz, I mean, let's see here. Now, I go to Romans. I, I, you know, could do a whole study on what he just said right there. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The faith, or faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Tangible, we live in a tangible world. I don't know what that means. No. You live in a tangible world. Uh, you and the turd in your pocket live in a tangible world. I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Sometimes these guys, they use words and things, and say things that I just cannot comprehend, man. Man, uh, let's see here. Let's go to Romans chapter one. I think okay, I'm just the invisible things of Him, invisible the tangible things of Him, or the invisible things of Him, things you can't touch. Him. That's what invisible means. You can't see Him. You can't touch Him. For the invisible things of Him. From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as he, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse, man. You got no excuse. I don't know what you're talking about. Intangible world, intangible, tangible, intangible. I don't know what you, I, what in the world is going on here? Word for us to understand. We're going to delve into that. So Jesus is yet to still, he will return. Yes. Okay. And he will sit exactly a thousand years in Israel on a. Exactly 1,000 years he will sit there and then that's it. Right? Then he doesn't sit there anymore he doesn't reign anymore and then pastor Aaron takes over and it's his turn 
Apparently. I mean, why would you say that? I mean, it, you're already, when you say he sits there for 1,000 years, you're already contradicting the Word of God. So why not go all out? Why stop there and leave it a mystery? What happens after Jesus stops reigning in Israel? Huh? You take over, right? You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to scare people away. And he will sit exactly a thousand years in Israel on a throne. Now, Jesus hasn't done that. Let me ask you, has Jesus reigned physically as a man on the earth? as a king well let's see does the Bible say he will sit physically on the earth and reign for 1,000 years in Israel now you put a lot right there on the table and of course it doesn't and you can't show a Bible verse I can't show you that it's not in the Bible I can't show you that because it's not in the Bible right you see so I, there's something I want to say but I'm gonna save it right so when Jesus came the first time the reason they thought he was going to do all this stuff as a warrior is because that is that is a promise in the Old Testament that he will reign and rule and judge the nations. Even Jesus himself said, I'm going to I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Even Jesus himself said, I'm still going to do it the Old Testament that he will reign and rule and judge the nations even Jesus himself said I'm going to I'm still going to do it I even Jesus said I'm still going to do it isn't that what he said and rule and judge the nations. Even Jesus himself said, I'm going to, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Did I misspell this? No. Huh. That's weird. I'm still going to do it. He said that right before he was taken and executed uh, on crucifixion. But he gave up his spirit anyway. They... But he gave up his spirit anyway. What do you mean anyway? He was going to do it, but he gave up his spirit anyway. So what do you say? You lied? I don't know. Anyway, he gave up his spirit anyway, even though he said he was going to do it. Said he was going to do it, but he lied and gave up his spirit. They didn't kill Jesus. He gave it up. But that They didn't kill Jesus. <laughs> But he gave up his spirit anyway. They didn't kill Jesus. They didn't kill Jesus. They didn't kill Jesus. They didn't kill Jesus. Let's see. They didn't kill Jesus. They didn't kill who both killed the Lord Jesus. They didn't kill Jesus. Who killed the Lord Jesus? We got a problem here, man. We got a problem. Who killed the Lord Jesus? It says it right there. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God in our contrary to all. Man, well, they didn't kill Jesus. Well, they I, they did. They, yeah, I know the point that you're making. 
is that Jesus laid down his life. They didn't take it from him. He gave it. But they did kill him. He says he gave it up. But that's a different story. He was resurrected and raised. Now, he does sit. Yes, he gave it up. But that's a different story. He was resurrected and raised. Now. He was resurrected or raised. Why would you? Is that another? Are you misspeaking left and right here? Okay. He does sit. Yes. In the heavens. He sits on the heavenly throne. That authority is the supreme authority of everything. Uh, the Lord in his the Lord is in his holy temple the Lord's throne is in heaven his seed also will I make to endure forever in his throne as the days of heaven the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all Interesting, huh? The heaven is my throne. Now, um, the heaven is my throne. See, I like this one here. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. What house? What house will you build me? Saith the Lord. And what is the place of my rest? Huh? See, you call yourself a pastor, you're preaching on stuff you don't even know, and you are contrary to the Word of God. This is incredible, man. It's, it's every single dadgum preacher in the world. None of them know what, what it says. They're all misguided. Every single one of them. It's incredible. And we're not even two minutes in this thing. And, it, uh, and nearly every single thing he said is wrong. And look, he got a like. Somebody likes it. Somebody just as ignorant as he is. Everything is above all creation. But Jesus has not sat on the... But. B-U-T-T. -T, that but. You can't trust God... You got to trust Pastor Aaron because he says things that are contrary to the Word of God. And he needs your money. See, that's what you don't understand. He needs your money. So give him your money. Otherwise, God's not happy with you. And of course, he's God because Jesus is going to reign a thousand years and then he's taken over buddy and if you're not giving him the money now you're going to pay later of the earth physically as a king on David's throne which would be where where in Israel boom there it is that's enough in Israel and he's going to sit in David's throne which is where in Israel there you go. Yeah, there you hear it. He said it. All right. So imagine this. I mean, just anybody wants to put some thought into anything, you know, use your brain cells. It's a good thing, man, to use your brain cells. Now, David's throne is in Israel. And then, of course, um, where is Israel? Well, that's over there in the Middle East. Well, okay. So 1948, what happened? 1948, what happened? 1948, the creation of Israel. So David's throne what was, was disappeared and then reappeared in 1948. Let's go back here. Acts chapter 7. How be it the Most High dwells not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. 
Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hands made all these things? You don't understand this? you know, Or maybe you just never... You haven't gotten this far in the book yet. Maybe you just skipped to the end or something. It's, I, what in the, how do you explain this? Well, the bottom line is... These guys do not believe the Bible... That they hold in their hands. That's why they're so... Uh, seemingly free to say whatever is in their imagination because the foundation of what they believe is their own heart sounds good man you know because you, if the, the throne of God is in Israel then we ought to be watching TV giving money to politicians, giving money to the pastor, and devoting our lives to the television, and listening on the edge of our seats to what the prophets of God are telling us. And they're going to save us. You know, the, our, the politicians, they're going to save us. The doctors, they're going to save us. The TV that is going to tell us what we need to do. It sounds wonderful, man. It does. Sounds good. Sounds great. As long as people, as long as Dan Rather tells us everything's fine, then everything's fine, right? And as long as I give you money, I feel good about myself. Life is good. Right? Don't matter. You know, what's true, what's not true. Jesus will come and straighten all that up. It don't matter. He'll he'll straighten us right up. Right? We'll be we'll be just fine. Yeah. Jesus will come and he'll tell us the truth. He'll straighten us up. It don't matter now. All that matters is that we believe in Jesus and we give our money. To Reverend Schmitty or Reverend Aaron, right? I mean, what Jesus, really, what Jesus said doesn't even matter. No, the only thing is, is you believe in Jesus. That's all. That's the only thing that matters. Just don't worry about nothing else. Matthew 24, verse 4. Now, the context is Jesus was asked, What is the sign of his coming and of the end of of the world and the very first thing Jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many now, isn't that something I mean think about it the very first thing that he warns us in regards to the end of the world is deceivers that's incredible. That's incredible, really, because that suggests that there are people today who are saying that Jesus is the Christ, and yet they're liars, right? They're deceivers. I mean, it's, they don't know the truth. They've been deceived themselves, right? It's not like they're a mastermind. These guys are just as dumb as the rest of them. But they are deceivers, claiming Jesus is the Christ. Why would he even warn us of that if it didn't matter? If the truth doesn't matter, then why warn us? It's interesting, here in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven heaven 
And of course we know that the will of God is that we all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the will of God. There is no other will. <laughs> right? Uh, I get it. There are a bun bunch of stupid people out there that can't figure that part out. I get it. But let's continue. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Right? I mean, that's what they do, isn't it? In the churches? Many wonderful works, right? They do many wonderful works and they cast out devils in the name of Jesus and they preach and teach in the name of Jesus. Remember Jesus says, many will come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. Wow, it almost sounds like he's talking about all the churches. And it's interesting here because he says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Right, so this is interesting because he never knew them. They were never saved. And why? Well, if you look at this, these guys are doing, you know, in thy name, and in thy name done, they've done, they did, they cast, right? And we, we cast and done are indications of things that they do. And they think that they will be saved by the things that they do. Right? That's why Jesus will profess unto them that he never knew them. Because they believed that the things that they do will save them. And they, they will never never ever save anybody all of our works are as filthy rags they are you compare what you've done in your life with what God has done for us there is no comparison man you need to humble yourself you thinking you're such a wonderful person that God's gonna save you oh buddy you're in trouble I mean that. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You are in trouble, Pastor Aaron. You are in trouble. What is that verse? Give me a second here. I want to show one verse. I think it's very interesting. I gotta think here. But the but the prophet right? But the pastor huh? Which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet pastor, huh? shall die so you consider consider that if you actually were born of God you let's say let's say you actually were um, had the fear of God and you were born of God wouldn't you then want to be very very careful about what you say God says 
you're talking about you know thousand year reign that's not in the Bible right that's not in the Bible at all all right you talk about uh, the Davidic the Davidic promises all right but you don't want to point to them I guess but whatever um, you maybe you do later I don't care but the Davidic promise never says anything at all about a thousand years and it in fact we read here in Luke chapter 1 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Not a thousand years. As this guy, this straight up lied. He lies. He's a liar and a deceiver. It, and he's void of common sense and simple logic. And at the heart of the issue is he wants your money. And I bet you he's led by the lust of his own belly. That's what I bet you. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Not a thousand years, but forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. This guy said a thousand years he's going to sit in his throne after he returns. That's weird. Well, what happens after? I can't say definitively that this guy doesn't say, but I've listened to enough of these guys and they never say. Who takes over when after Jesus is done? They never say. They just bounce around and tell you forget about it. I suspect he's the same way. Right. I'd like to be proven wrong. I don't mind being wrong. I just want to know what's right. And what I know is that Jesus reigns forever. And... There is no mention of a thousand year reign. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere at all in the Bible. You notice here in verses 4 and 6 specifically it says they. Talking about those of us that are saved. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years. That's not assumed it's not said it's not anywhere at all in the Bible we right now we live and reign with Christ right now if you if you say you don't live and reign with Christ right now then you're admitting that you're not saved you condemn yourself with your own words and look, I'm not condemning you you condemn yourself by your own words and again in verse 6 they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years right now we are priests of God and right now we reign with Christ right now this is a very unique time period that's why it's called a thousand years it's not forever right but we do live with Christ because Christ has come and done all the works for us and he has led the way for us he has come into our body God manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit he's done all the works for us and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us how could you say how can you dispute this really Jesus has done the works for us in John 14 in my father's house 
our many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Right? So, he's made that promise. This is the period of time that we're living in, where he has come and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. Now consider Exodus 19, for example. The Lord says, Now therefore, if ye obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Not some of it, all of it. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right? Notice here in verse 6 it says, And they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Now, here in Exodus, God is telling Moses to tell the children of Israel that they are a kingdom of priests. Isn't that interesting? A little bit. And we go to let's go to First Peter chapter two. What's that say? Well, you notice some interesting. You see peculiar. You see a holy nation. You see royal priesthood. Right? You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And uh, it, to me, uh, so this is interesting. Also, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain, abstain, excuse me, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. We, he, it, this is interesting on, on a couple of levels, right? Ab abstain from fleshly lust, and of course we know that in the last days there shall be mockers walking after their own ungodly lust, and that's what I seriously um, or sincerely um, contend what is driving these false teachers okay they yeah 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 they want the they want the sex now but they then want to fantasize of a thousand years of sex as well and trying to get people on board with their sexual fantasies all right, Second Peter chapter three. Knowing this first, first knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and of course in Jude eighteen, how that they told you in the last days there shall be mockers, walking after their own ungodly lust. Here back to First Peter chapter two. Uh, it's interesting. It says, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. See, we are strangers in a strange land. There's no question about it. This world is not ours. Right? We want out of this world. And so, therefore, when you say the throne of God is in this world, you don't have any understanding whatsoever. None. You couldn't be more wrong. It's incredible. 
how much you are in error in the first one minute and 55 seconds. It's incredible. And of course, he didn't point to one Bible verse to support a single thing. And I think that's uh, the trouble with a lot of people is that they don't believe the Bible. Why would you quote the Bible if you don't believe it? Right? So, again, uh, right now we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now, we are a royal priesthood. Right now, we are a holy nation. Right now. We, right now, we live and reign with Christ right now, right? Okay, so let's uh, real quickly go to John chapter 11. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me shouldn't, oh, I'm, I can't remember what he says. What's he say? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this so who's the first resurrection well is it pastor Aaron I don't think so uh, no no in fact I know so who is the first begotten of the dead? Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, if you actually read the Bible and you believed what you read, you would have saw right here in the very first chapter of the book of Revelation. It's incredible, really. Verse 5. You know, maybe you skipped that part. I get it. You know, when I was in school, I used to skim through a lot. Except, uh... Things have changed, right? Things have changed with me. I no longer skim through the books because now I know I've got the words directly from God above right here in my hands. Verse 5, Revelation 1, verse 5, from Jesus Christ, who is faithful, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead. Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. First begotten of the dead. That's incredible. He's the first begotten of the dead. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Let's see. Here, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. I don't know why. I think it's faster. I don't know why. Let's do it this way. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Skim, 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 skim. Oh, we better read this part. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But, huh? But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Are you paying attention? Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So, if we use our brain cells just a little bit here, we can figure out. Christ, the first fruits, and afterward they that are Christ that is coming. What that means is that Christ is the first resurrection. 
He's the first resurrection. He's the first fruits of them that slept. He's the first fruits. He's the first begotten of the dead. He is the resurrection. You get the revelation to I can't figure this out. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 first resurrection. Blah, 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 I don't know what that means. Oh, that must mean I'm the first resurrection. Huh? Or maybe it's Pastor Aaron. <laughs> Baby Pastor Aaron, he's going to get resurrected. And, you know, people shut off their brains because they want to fantasize about having all these little girls to themselves. Right? I mean, why else would you preach a thousand years? Huh? Why else? There is no other reason. Because you want a thousand years of sexual activity. You want to take advantage of little girls now and for a thousand years after Jesus comes. Well, you're going to find out uh, the hard way. There ain't no sex after Jesus comes. It don't matter what you say, it don't matter how much you politic, it don't matter how many people you get on your side, it ain't going to change the fact that when Jesus comes, there is no more sex. Oh, buddy, you're in for a big surprise. Big big surprise and of course this whole thousand years is based on sex man you, they don't preach it any for any other reason remember what we read in second peter chapter 3 knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own ungodly lust yeah yeah that's why they preach this thousand year reign they're they're keeping that a secret aren't they most of them not all of them, and maybe not even this guy, but I've shown you that these guys are preaching this idea. One, The one preacher said he's going to be uh, turned into his, uh, back to his 20-year-old self, and he's going to be full of dynamite. He's going to be, you know, having romantic relations, just like he did when he was 20 years old. He was excited about it. Right? And of course I've shown you other people that have uh, uh, you know they teach this idea that um, it's still a little confusing to me because <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't know how anybody are, it could be that stupid but they preach this idea that there will be babies born after Jesus comes. I know what the one guy from the other day he said it's only going to be unsaved people that are having babies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Only unsaved people are going to be having babies. While the the people that are in their glorified bodies, they won't be having babies or they will be having babies. I'm not real sure. He wasn't real clear on what he was saying. But what he did say is that the when Jesus comes, the believers are resurrected. And then a thousand years later, the unbelievers are resurrected. And the believers are saved and the unbelievers are not saved. So, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. Well, a baby born after Jesus comes, it's got no, no opportunity to get saved. Because the resurrection is past. It's already, the resurrection of believers is already, it's already happened. So, they have no chance for a thousand years. They have no chance. So, that don't make any sense. 
right? I don't understand. I, you know, I, I can only imagine that people are having a hard time, a very hard time uh, getting oxygen to their brain. Or maybe they're just not, you know, thinking, you know, using their brain. Right? So, in their scenario, they got Jesus coming and we're transformed into our glorified body. And in a thousand years, the unsaved people are still alive somehow and having babies. But none of them will be saved because the resurrection has already happened. So, that thousand years is just in vain. It's really no purpose at all. None whatsoever. Don't make any sense. Unless you want to include yourself in the sexual activities that will be taking place. Huh? Ha ha. And that's what the Bible warns us of. Scoffers. You're scoffing the Word of God when you make these claims. It's weird. It really is weird. If we read in the same chapter, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, the day of the Lord, that's when Jesus comes. Okay, in case you didn't know. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, at an hour which no man knoweth. See, this thing is preached over and over and over, all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's the same thing. In the Revelation 20, 2 Peter chapter 3, Genesis 3, they're not standalone verses. They all agree one with the other. It's all consistent, all throughout the Bible. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. See, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is not just uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 2 Peter chapter 3. This is found all, 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 all throughout the Bible. It's the same thing. It's the same moment in time. And it's over and over and over and over and over and over again. You can, and then you read something like that, you can't figure this out. It's incredible, man. It's incredible. When you are being taught the same thing over and over, and you read it over and over and over and over, then this, you got the same event mentioned over and over and over and over. The great day, the great and terrible day of the Lord, right? From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. You can't figure out who sits on that great white throne. You can't figure out that great white thrones in heaven. You think it's over there in Israel that was created in 1948? That ain't making no sense, man. You don't have any understanding at all, and I know why. It's because you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. What you what drives you is not the Holy Spirit. It's the lust in your belly, your sexual desires. See, you're getting money from this church, aren't you? Gen X. Might as well change it to Gen Sex, right? Huh? You don't have any understanding of what's the matter anyway. Right? You don't know what the truth is and you don't care. Right? What's the matter? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements of the earth and the heaven, the air, will melt with fervent heat the earth also the earth also in addition to the elements right the earth elements and the earth and the works the works that are therein shall be burned up that would include childbearing right and working for other men being under another man and having men underneath us all of that the father the son the grandson the mo the mother-in-law the daughter-in-law so on and so forth all of that is going to be done away with you remember if any man does not hate uh, mother-in-law let's let's go this way no i can't Oh my goodness, it's uh, 
Hey, ah, uh, ah, uh, da, 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 can I find it? Can I find it? If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother, his wife, children, brother, and sister, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Why? Because in the life to come hereafter, all of that is going to be done away with. And if you love your life right now, you're not worthy to be the disciple of the Lord. Because what we're experiencing in this world is not what we're going to experience in the life to come hereafter. And that's why this is directly related to what we're reading in Second Peter chapter 3. When it describes the works that are therein shall be burned up. And of course, as you've seen me point out many times, in Genesis 3, it was, it was, was not until after Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God put it on them to be fruitful and multiply, to have, you know, dirty, stinky sex. That came after as a result of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then, of course, um, God makes the promise that he will do away with evil. And when he says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Heal. So that's a promise that God is going to stomp on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. Because it was the serpent that beguiled Eve into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because that happened, we suffer. And if we suffer with Christ, then we shall reign with Christ. <laughs> It's so simple, man. It's so simple. Now, these clowns, they can't figure it out because they still want to have sex forever and ever and ever. Man, well, they can't have sex forever and ever. Well, let's make it a thousand years of them. Right? That's not going to work either. About a year in for a big surprise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godly witness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness all right, so it, when I read this stuff and then I read, you know, Revelation uh, 22 and you read that Isaiah 19, or I'm sorry, Isaiah 13 or whatever, whatever that is, okay. When I read um, yeah, all the stuff in the Bible, man, and I see the same thing being mentioned over and over. And then I got somebody in the comment section trying to say, oh, all right. Well, it says there will be no more sea, but that doesn't really mean there's going to be no more sea. And then, of course, it says new heaven and new earth. And, of course, that it doesn't mean there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. It just means, it means something else. And, and blah, 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 blah. I, I, no understanding whatsoever. None. And, and I, you know, I appreciate the comments, man. I do. I appreciate this stuff about hippies and peace and sex and drugs. I get it. I get it. Yeah. This is why. This is what drives me. Because when I see people in this in great error, and that there's no reason to be in error like this. There's no reason at all. Because the Bible is so simple. It's there's not rocket science. It's not complicated. The only requirement is that you believe it. Believe that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God because it is. It, it's directly from God. You're going to find out. I mean, if you figure it out sooner, it's going to be to your benefit. All right, it's going to give you peace, it's going to give you joy, understanding. Isn't that what you desire? Aren't those the things that you desire? What is it that you desire, really?
Now that's what I desire. I don't know why people would desire anything else. Honest to God, I don't. The Bible comes from God above. All right, Reverend Schmitty said it comes from foreign dead languages. And you got to have a master's degree in BS to understand it. Huh? Is that it? Master's degree in BS? Is that what you got? I don't doubt that. As for me, I know. Absolute, with, with absolute certainty, that the Bible I hold in my hands comes directly from God above. There's no middleman. There's no interpreter. There's no translator. These words come from God. And of course, if you don't understand it, well, there's a reason. It's because you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. And if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, you're not going to understand it. Not until you believe it's from God. That's the way it works. <laughs> It's pretty simple, too. It's interesting here in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 8. How hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? All right, this is amazing. We have the word of God in our own tongue, wherein we were born. See, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord will never pass away let's see if I can find oh my goodness I can't find nothing I don't know nothing Isaiah 59 verse 21 as for me this is my covenant my promise with them saith the Lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. See, the key there is forever. So heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. See, God has promised us that his words will be in our mouth upon our tongue forever forever and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born because we have the word of God in our tongue see the word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever and ever it's not stuck in a dead language man what was you thinking? Oh, Reverend Schmitty, Reverend Aaron said blah, 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 blah. Well, stop listening to Reverend Aaron. Stop listening to Reverend Schmitty. And start believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. Of course, I'm talking about a King James Bible, and I'm confident. I'm confident if you believe in the Bible that you hold in your hands, you're going to come to the conclusion it's only the King James Bible. When you read these other phony um translations you'll see well this is a problem here and this ain't making no sense and the spirit ought to show you i mean if you're born of the spirit of god you ought to know <laughs> you ought to know the voice of god really for the son of man has come to save that which was lost uh, nothing too controversial about that, right? The weird thing is, though, it's weird. The ESV, the NIV, look at that. You you have an NIV, you go to chapter 18, you don't even know how to count right. It don't even know, if you can't, if it don't know how to count from 1 to 12, why would you trust anything that is written? Well, it can't even count. Well, it can count up to 10. Well, that's pretty good. But it can't count up to 11. Because in the NIV, 
Matthew chapter 18, it it forgot the number 11, apparently. Forgot it. It's not there. It's not there. There's a problem. That's a problem. Okay, look, you want to say, well, some manuscripts don't have that. So we, don't, we just took it out. Well, you, you got a problem. If that, I mean, you got a problem. That's what you believe. That does not excuse why you forgot to put number 11 in there. See, I, you're just being dishonest. A, a child can see that and see that, hey, there's something missing. There should be an 11. And, I mean, it's stupid. But I get it. it. It took me a while to figure it out. I get it. And the way I the way I figured it out was by cor uh, correlating. Is that the right word? Correlating the different uh, the different Bible versions because I the I would read one and I'm like, wait a second, I, this is different than what I remember. And then I go and I look at another translation. And I see there's a contradiction here. There's a problem there. Something ain't right. And uh, ultimately, through a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of study. I mean, I wasn't studying once a week. I wasn't studying on the weekends. You know, some people... I was studying every single day. Sometimes up to 12 hours, even 16 hours a day. That's all I would do all day long, read and study. Back then, you got to figure, I I wasn't a believer until I was 31, so I had a lot of catching up to do. And, and I was so excited about, you know, hey, wow, God is real, you know. And... Uh, so I spent a lot of time studying, but I mean, the Spirit will take you right to it. The Spirit will take you right to the King James Bible, guaranteed. The sooner you get there, the better. All right, that's why I encourage people to believe the Bible that they hold in their hands, and to know that it is from God. All right. So in Revelation 20. We can actually believe what it says. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. All right, we're seeing people dying here in verse 4. And these are the things that are happening during this thousand years. Nevertheless, we live and reign with Christ during this period of time. And then after the thousand years is the resurrection. We, I could go over this, uh, Daniel 12, verse 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. So, like in Matthew 13, for example, the parable of the wheat and the tares. The end of the world is the harvest. That's when the wheat is plucked up and put in the barn which is above and then the tares are gathered put in bundles and burned on the ground consistent with everything that we read in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation alright so the rest of the dead live not again clear indication that the resurrection happens after the thousand years and Jesus is the first resurrection, the first begotten of the dead, the first fruits of them that slept. And Jesus even says plainly, I am the resurrection. So you really got no excuse for not realizing, not figuring this out. You, I mean, you got no excuse at all. Just because Reverend Schmidt doesn't know it, doesn't mean you can't know it. We are partakers of his resurrection right he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never 
ever die. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. Pretty simple. Of course, if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how can you understand the simplicity of the Scripture? It's incredible, right? Now, of course, at the end of the thousand years, we are resurrected, and it's the great and terrible day of the Lord, the judgment of God, and Satan will gather all the people that are on earth because we're plucked up out of this earth, and we meet the Lord in the air, and Satan gathers together the unsaved. This uh, is an action. He shall go out to deceive the nations to gather them. All right, that's the action that's going to take place. He's going to gather all the unsaved at our feet. Remember in Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Of course, over and over and over again, um, it talks about... Uh, for he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet, right? The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. They're going to be at our feet, okay? And again, in Genesis 3, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel, right? He's above, he can stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, right? He's above, the serpent below, and so on and so forth, over and over and over and over and over again, all throughout the Bible, and of course, if you've got, um, you know, the throne of Jesus on the earth, you got Jesus on the earth, and you got him sitting in a chair in over in Israel that was created in 1948, and then at the after the thousand years, fire is going to come down from God and devour Jesus and his throne and all the people and so on and so forth. You just you ain't put no thought into this at all. Not none whatsoever. The camp of the saints in the beloved city. Well, if you would have read the chapter 21 of the next chapter, you would have known that the city of God comes down from heaven. Therefore, it has to be in heaven when this takes place. And that would be consistent with everything that we read in the, in the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The fact that you don't understand, you got no excuse, man. You don't need, you don't need, um, you know, you don't need to be a 19-year-old snot-nosed kid and go to some Bible seminary college to know this. You don't. All you need to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hand. That's it.